It's time to go a little bit deeper into understanding the augmented reality and how it works. Willing to create your very own AR app but don't know where to start in designing your user experience? Let's go into step-by-step -step analysis of the main features an AR application should have. In our new segment, UX Review. Today we're going to discuss how your smartphone understands the surroundings and what are the best practices in placing a 3D object into it. My name is Maria and this is UX Review. UX Review is called to help you understand what makes a good augmented reality experience. Each video we're taking the key elements of an app and explain how it works or how to make something work, as well as look at a few successful examples of implementation. Today we're talking about plane tracking and objects placement. In a couple of our previous episodes, we have already discussed the two main types of augmented reality, marker-based and marker-less. The two features we are discussing today are the core to marker-less experiences. We'll explain all of this in a few app examples today. Plane tracking is how your smartphone recognizes the surroundings and positions itself in accordance to it. The plane you choose to scan is your starting point, your zero ground. Further, a AR interaction will be placed in accordance to this coordinate. One of the most tricky yet important tasks for your app is to advise the user on what are the most appropriate places to put your models on top. Horizontal free space will work the best. Most of the time your camera will skip paying attention to your PC, mug or other objects, which sometimes produces the immersion due to funny collisions. It is your task to inform user about the scale of models and what kind of surface is the most appropriate for them. Surface needs to have some kind of natural or artificial pattern. Lines, spots or textures would help here. Flat white floor in the studio is tracked quite badly, as well as most of one color walls. Viewing this on examples brings me to my personal favorite, Angry Birds AR. When you first launch this app, it makes sure you understand how to use it, even if you never used surface-based AR before. For some, the UI could even have too many details at once, but given that the audience is children, it can work this way. Another example from the gaming world would be AR toys. While it makes it super clear that surface is being tracked, I would not say that this is the most appealing design solution. A successful retail example is Meaty. Its simple visuals and suggestions make it easy to properly scan the area. Why did I say properly there? Because for AR, a user mistake is a huge risk you, as an app developer, have in losing those very users without really trying your application. If they can't scan the surface and place an object on it, how do you expect them to get to all the cool stuff you have in place? Many unprofessional user experiences result in people not understanding that they did something wrong and simply seeing the floating object in the air as your problem, and not as a consequence of them first pointing the camera at the table and then changing the view to the floor and assuming that the app would simply understand that, which it should, but it's like an extra feature. So now that you've finally tracked the surface, you can place an object on it, right? And this should be a simple stupid mechanic. We're all used to tapping, zooming and rotating. Use the most natural movements you can in order to create a smooth experience. Google Lens and their Viki has a smooth and very natural way to place an object. This is the way it should be. Remember that every unnecessary tap or mistaken tap only frustrates your users.
There are two apps I could discuss in this placement segment. Urban Base AR as a good example and then Meaty as a slightly confusing one. While they look similar, in the first one you're using very natural movements to navigate the placement. I didn't want to tap anything outside the protocol and it didn't feel I'm stupid because of it. The latter one has its own rules that it tries to impose and it's an additional mental effort for me to try to memorize those and use it while playing around with an app. So what if you know that your experience has a specific shape to it? Say it's a long gallery hall in AR like the one a he or she app dedicated to female arts week has. You need to advise your users that the experience would have a direction and they did it with a nice touch. Using some old school mechanics could also work. Here's our take with Škoda. Using a rather conventional approach was the ask from our client and we went along with it, cause their customer audience is older than a usual geeky AR crowd. Sliders on the sides were there to avoid unnecessary mistakes from the users. First place, then turn and choose a scale. View the experience after. And finally, last but not least, one of the most engaging examples of simply tracking the floor and then placing something above it, JFK Moonshot Experience. This year's Webby Award nominee is a good example of simple and effective historical app. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. It quickly tracks the surface, deploys the rocket model and launches it. So how to make plane tracking and object placing in your app easy and fast? Make sure the interface is user-friendly. Use not only text guides but interactive help to help new users understand the basics of the process. Don't make too many visual effects at this phase. They will distract from the functional part. Instead, focus on one helpful visual feature as a compass. Think about the scaling. If your task is to place a space rocket and launch it in AR, better not put it on the table. That means explaining the user what kind of surface he has to use. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and we hope you liked this episode. Please share what are the components or features of an AR application you would like us to review in the future. And for now, like, share, subscribe and I see you next time.